post-concert depression. Hi, Jess. Hello. Welcome, everybody. We have our friend Megan Grippa on today. Hi, Meg. Hi, guys. You want to tell us a little bit about you? Of course. Um, I am the third member of <laughs> Meg Sammy with the side of Jess. Yes. Yeah. I actually first met Jess because we were both UC Bearcats. Heck yeah. Go cats. I liked time flies, but none of my friends like time flies. And so Classic. this random girl, like we liked the same tweet, I think. And my <laughs> bio like said Cincinnati Bearcats. And then Jess DM'd me. Like, oh my gosh, are you a Time Flies fan? Do you go to UC? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And I was like, who is this girl? I don't know you, but <laughs> you like Time Flies, I guess that's cool. And then we went to this random sushi dinner and I thought it was just going to be me and Jess, but she invited like two <laughs> other Time Flies fans. <laughs> <laughs> Emily and Allie, which was, which was fine. But I was like, whoa, I didn't know I was coming to like a group time play. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's me trying to include everybody. Mm-hmm. That's so funny. <laughs> Me- or Jess was my gateway to Meg. And- Thank God. I'm your gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> but Meg and I kind of just, we kind of hit it off from the beginning. Kind of. We did. Same people, different bodies. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> it's but like. Yeah. So I was along for the time flies ride of everything. And then kind of since that is no longer a thing, we kind of made our own, you know, we go to different shows together and mm-hmm. kind of some of my best friends now. Basically oh. time flies ended and then we had to decide, are we going to be friends in real life <laughs> or are we done? <laughs> and like, I honestly couldn't imagine my life without you, Meg. I love you. I know. I, I feel the same way. It, well, like, it used to be so easy to say, like, oh, these are my time flies friends. Yeah. But, like, it, that doesn't do it justice anymore. I'm like, they're no. not just my time flies friends. They're my friends. No, like, I was in your wedding. I feel like that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you guys attended my wedding and were at my bachelorette party. Like, yeah. yeah. Much more than just time flies friends. Much bigger. Well, who do you guys obsess over now? Okay, well, first, there's an obvious one. Like, we obviously go to Tony and Pilot shows, and we love top, you know, mm-hmm. click life. Yeah. But <laughs> for a while, we were into YBM, some, yeah. some Miles Parish. Mm-hmm. And Meg's husband actually loves Miles. <laughs> <laughs> His number one fan. It's crazy. The hilarious thing about that is, on the way home, Jim and I were on the phone, and he goes, what do you have this afternoon? I was like, oh, I'm podcasting with Meg and Jess on their podcast. And he was like, oh, what is the podcast about? And I told him, you know, the podcast is about, and he goes, well, do I get to say something about Miles? <laughs> sure. Bring it on, Jim. Jim, Jim you want a I, celeb, celeb shout out? What? <laughs> I don't know. What's that thing? Oh, a cameo. He's over there uh, playing Call of Duty. Come on. Don't be shy, Jim. Yeah. What do you have to say about Miles, Jim? He said, we don't speak of the trash here. (laughs) Jim, don't be a hater. He's always been a hater of our music taste. Listen, listen, YBM, if you're listening, Jim does not speak for all. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If anyone is wondering, YBM was a part of, what is their name? I don't even remember. Kaylin and Miles. Kaylin and Miles. (laughs) I'm sorry. Literally their names. (laughs) Brain fart. Anyways. Anyway, so that's, like, we would always go, we went to a couple of his shows, and it was a good time. We had a blast. Um, But I would say 21 Pilots, like, wow. Meg and Jim kind of introduced me to 21 Pilots. I think, like, you had said, like, have you ever listened to them? And I had, I think I'd listened to, I don't remember, a song off Semi-Automatic. I think I'd listened to that, but I had never, like, really listened. So I listened, and it was, like the heavens opened up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Loved it. Um, I feel like they were ahead. the first band to kind of fill our uh, time flies void. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, so then like getting tickets to that show, 
it was obviously way different than a small intimate show that we were used to. Uh, so we had to do seats in like the bowl and that was just not the first 21 pilot show that I went to was Memphis. Um, and Jess actually came with us and Jim was there. Um, and I just remember at the end of that show, it was like magic. Like, I just remember thinking like, this was the best show mm -hmm. theatrically. Like it was just great. Um, and what do you guys remember of that show? I mean, I just remember the hamster ball. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I had seen them once before that in like big venues. Like, I, we saw them at UC for free, but as we all know, yeah. we were very intoxicated. So I don't remember too much of that show. Me either. <laughs> I had seen them once before in Cincinnati and I liked their music, but like once I saw them live, it like elevated it so much. Is that the I, show I where you were in a, is that yeah. the show that you were in a box? Yeah. I remember you Snapchatting me and you were like, Meg, we have to, we have to go see them. Like you have to see this live. It and like, Memphis was it. Yeah. Memphis. Well, I remember, was, sorry, go I mean, ahead. It was amazing. And yeah. I remember listening to them like this, um, these two guys that went to my high school were, they were in a band and they were going to play a show with 21 Pilots before they really blew up. And I remember listening, I think it was to car radio and you know, there's Tyler does a little bit of um, kind of screamo stuff, which I'm not really into, but when you see it live, it's such a different, they can trans, they're definitely one of those people that I would have to say their music is better live than it is recorded and it's great recorded, but when somebody can, oh, I do you disagree. I mean, I, I love them both ways. Yeah. Okay, I but agree, I, but I'm just, it's, I love when somebody can go and put on a live performance. Yeah. And, and sound it. just as good as they do recorded. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say something and now I totally had a brain fart. Sorry, I might have interrupted you. I don't know if you did. Who if you did, it's okay. John Bellion and who was the other opener at that show? Judah, Judah and the Lion. Yeah, and I really love Judah now too. Mm -hmm. They have some really good stuff. I definitely, Judah and the Lion 2 is one where I heard their music on the radio and they played a lot in Nashville because that's where they're from and that's where I lived at the time. And seeing them live made me love them more because I enjoyed how they, how they were able to perform their songs yeah. and they sounded amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I was just watching, now that there's like no concerts, <laughs> I'm like trying to fill the void with watching interviews of different artists and Meg and I love watching uh top interviews and this interview I was just watching was um Tyler was talking about the first time that he was heckled and he was saying that he was like at this really like small small venue and some guy came in off the street that was like wasted and he was like ah, I don't know, like you can't rap and Tyler <laughs> went up and was like rapping in his face and he was telling the audience it's really funny because I seemed really intimidating rapping in his face, but if you would have listened to the lyrics, I'm like saying, I'm insecure. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just really funny. And I think that's why I like them so much because they don't, um, it's not like a facade, like trying to be hard or any of mm -hmm. that. Like it's a lot of their lyrics are really raw and real. And I love that about them. Well, I also just think they're so goofy and they don't take everything so seriously. Like when they won a Grammy, they, literally accepted it in their underwear I thought that was so funny because they were like just joke I think probably joking when they were like yeah when if we ever win a Grammy we're gonna you know accept it in our underwear but they just they followed through and I just thought that was hilarious yeah I, know. I you also remember why they've gotten so far is because they are like so authentically themselves like mm -hmm. they've never yeah. like from the very beginning even when like Tyler talks about like playing in front of 13 people and then like you watch those videos of those shows, like his energy was the exact same in front of those 13 people as it is at a sold out venue that has like 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's always been just himself, which is- Do you remember- so, Go ahead, do you, do you remember when, I think they were playing some college show and um, the 
the school's programming Twitter or whatever had tweeted like, hey, who wants to win tickets? And Tyler retweeted them like, oh, I want to win tickets. And the guy was like, oh yeah, for sure. We'll put you in the drawing. And he's like, I'm the freaking artist. Like <laughs> The guy had no idea. What? I don't, I don't remember that, but that's hilarious. I could totally see that happening. Yeah, it was funny. Um, so obviously we started out in the bowl and that just didn't cut it. Um, and so the first time that we got floor tickets, Meg, do you want to talk about it? <laughs> so I was working at a nursing home as a dietitian. I had, I was in a morning meeting and I was like, I literally made up some excuse that I had to leave. So I literally left this meeting and went to my office to try and buy these tickets. And, and as, as I'm teaching, so mm -hmm. I like paused my class because we both had, we were texting back and forth. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try and get floor. You try and get floor and we'll just see how it goes. All right, take it away. So it was a Columbus show and we go to buy, they go on sale. We're both texting, but we're like not, it's like long legs of texting because we're trying to buy these tickets. First show, it sells out in like under a minute. And we were both sitting there like, are you kidding? totally gutted like yeah. I remember sitting at my desk with um the speech pathologist and I was like not crying but I was like you don't understand <laughs> yeah. you don't understand how upset I and I remember calling you and being like Meg like what like we were just so depressed mm -hmm. um and so then I went, minutes went by yeah and I had I had to pee so bad because I had been holding it because I didn't want to miss this ticket buying opportunity so I was like I'm gonna go pee so I start walking down the hallway and I get a text from the Ticketmaster, and they're like, 21 Pilots added a second show, like, this date. I didn't even look at the date, the time, didn't even know if we could go, but I, like, spun on one foot, and, like, ran back to my office to buy these tickets, quickly texted Meg, got on, and I ended up getting them, and I couldn't even, like, she texted me saying, Meg, there, there's a second show, and I was like, oh my gosh, so, like, I get on, and, like, by the time I got on, it was sold out. And I was like, oh my, and so I'm like texting her and there's no response, no response, <laughs> no response. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I get this message, we got floor. <laughs> I think I had the tickets in my cart and I was like, I don't want to believe this is real. I don't want to tell her. And then like, I get to the checkout and it's like, these tickets have been sold. And I'm like, I broke her soul. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then our second time, it just worked out like I was able to score three tickets and hopefully fingers crossed it can be a trend in every top show now I feel like we just can't go back to seated shows no mm -mm. you're ruined yeah it was it's life-changing um but I was telling Jess how like there are so many parts of the show that you have to like know them mm -hmm. to really understand um, and I thought maybe we could chat about that, like the red beanie and, uh, how the previous era Tyler had like black around his, um, mm -hmm. neck and his hands. So I thought, and then she didn't realize that Celine Dion played at the very end of the show and she doesn't know why. So I know. maybe you guys got to clue me in on all the, the ins and outs of these fan secrets so, or whatever. So... <laughs> So Meg is like, I feel like you are definitely a lot better than I am in the top world at getting information um, and like knowing all of the like cool things to know. So do you want to kind of explain a little bit yeah. <laughs> about Tyler? Well, when I first started listening, I didn't pick up on any of that. But then like going back and watching all of their interviews obsessively, I was like, okay, there's like a theme here. And there's like things that he is suggesting and saying that like, I think really relates to not only his music, but like his live shows. And so one of the main ones was like Blurry Face. I was like, I started listening like heavily when Blurry Face came out. So I was like, yeah, same Blurry Face character. Like, what does this mean? And it was like digging further into it. It's all about Blurry Faces, Tyler's basically his insecure self and like the other version of him that all the things he doesn't like about himself, that's Blurry Face. And yeah. How blurry kind of manifests itself in the music like at certain points of different songs like off the top of my head I can't think of one right now but you can hear like this voice in the background and it's like saying the opposite of what Tyler's saying and often it's like blurry face in the background which I never knew until I started 
really digging into that stuff. But I think that's also something that they do that's really cool is they kind of make a story out of their albums. Like their albums mm-hmm. are, there's a, there's a running theme and there's a story and there's deeper meaning behind everything. And Tyler like kind of has fun teasing people and being like, there's these seven things that you guys haven't found out yet. And like, yeah, like that whole trench last album was like a hunt for information. And I think what was so impressive is the top fandom are like crazy good at figuring out Mm -hmm. all these little clues. And like when the whole, their website, there was like a link to another website and it was this whole storyline of Clancy and, you know, Mm -hmm. Trench and Dima and all this stuff. And just like a regular person that's not totally engrossed in the fandom, I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea what this means um and Meg would like send me stuff and I'm like okay yeah like I kind of understand that um but then there it's so so cool to get on Twitter and like see all these people that are figuring it out and then I'm sure as like the artist like being Tyler and Josh and being able to see that people are picking up what you're putting down is like so cool well, the thought that comes behind all of that, it's, it's much more than the music. Like, like you said, there's a story yeah. and I honestly have no idea what you guys are talking about because I don't follow it as heavily as you do, but just knowing it kind of reminds me of what Taylor Swift does where she puts these little clues in. Easter eggs. When she, mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's cool that like, there's so much more thought that comes behind that it just shows how creative um, t- 21 Pilots is when it comes to releasing their music. And it's more of an experience than just listening to a song or something. Yeah. They, like, built this hype around this album that no one had heard, but, like, all millions of fans were, like, immersed in this story before the album even came out, and then, like, it comes out, and everyone's, like, oh, my gosh, like, and then it just made, it built, like, the anticipation up so much, and, like you said, the time it probably took Tyler, I think the Mark, their producer, or I think he might be their tour manager now, he um, talked, like, Tyler has a 16-page book on like trench and dima whoa like, his, his thoughts just like writing it out and mark was like i would love to just release it because like this shows how creative and how like hard tyler works to like think of these things yeah like that entire album is a story mm-hmm. and you really go on the ride of like you know being stuck in this city that mm-hmm. doesn't want you to be who you are and conform and it's really just a journey of breaking out of that and I think it's amazing Mm -hmm. I agree what what's the significance of the red beanie so I know that the in the blurry face era his colors were kind of like red black and blue and there's like a bunch of different theories of like why it's red Tyler like if you think of red like you think of like negative energy right Mm mm-hmm so Tyler was always wearing red and, and Josh was always in blue. Well, towards the end of that era, Tyler started wearing more blue and like Josh started wearing more red. And some hmm. people thought that that symbolized that like Josh was struggling more with more insecurity and like Tyler was kind of coming out of it and kind of like coming into his own. Whoa, I'm like getting chills. That's so crazy. Mm-hmm. And I, remember, it- I don't know if you would remember Meg, I think we, we both picked up on it. At one of the Blurry Face shows, there was a video on the screen. It was, like, Josh, like, battling a bunch of things. And mm-hmm. it was kind of, like, shadowed in red light. And so Tyler always wore, a, like, a ski mask um, mm-hmm. at the uh-huh. beginning of shows. And then he would kind of take it off. And that's, like, him coming out of, you know, his insecurities. But then after this little video, it was, like, a video <laughs> intro before the show, um, Josh has, like, a ski mask on, so, which, like, I feel like is so telling when they're doing interviews and stuff, because in the beginning of all the interviews that I've seen, like, the very first interviews of them, Tyler is very heavy with the conversation, Mm -hmm. um, and Josh just kind of sits back, and I feel like as the years have gone on, Josh has become more comfortable in sharing his thoughts and, like, um, being more grounded and, like, his views and being able to share that so I it's, yeah I think it translates a lot into their tour and like their music well it just says a lot to even just hearing you guys talk about it I didn't know about all this stuff and the significance behind a lot of it 
it's really cool. I know artists are vulnerable in their music, but when it comes to also the like putting on a show and interviewing and just there's more vulnerability there than if you just go to a show to have fun. Like there you it really feels like you can connect with them in that way, especially if you know these things because you know the significance behind what they mean. Yeah, and I think but, Tyler puts such an emphasis on like the importance of mental health, which like mm-hmm. a lot of artists won't talk about. Mm-hmm. But like I know on um, Neon Gravestones, like he played that song for their label, and their label was like, "This is suicide. Like you cannot release this song. This might ruin your career. Like this, this song is too touchy. You're not gonna like get the right audience." Blah blah blah. And Tyler was like yeah, I, it is a big risk, but like, this is something I feel passionately about. So I'm going to release it. Mm-hmm. And people like love that song and the meaning is so powerful and so many people resonated with it. So mm-hmm. it's all about connection. And if people can relate to it, it like who cares? I, I hate the fact of like labels being like, this is, you know, they said it's going to ruin your career. They told AJR that too, about stuff that they do in their songs. And now 21 Pilots and AJR are both like rocking it on the radio and just crushing it. And it's, it's, I think a transformation in the music world of being more relatable and more authentic that people can connect to rather than just trying to have a hit on the radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We actually got to go um, and watch them be interviewed by fans. Meg actually got to ask uh, a question, but at th- so that answer about neon gravestones and the label saying that they shouldn't release it, that was actually answered at the press conference that we attended and I just remember leaving and we were both like we can't believe that someone would try and be like no like this isn't good for your look Mm -hmm. because music is so much more than just a look like obviously by this time they have a huge fan base and yeah it could hit wrong but if he or both of them like have a feeling that they need to put this out like you can't shelter that. Like, that's huge. Their whole identity is, like, telling their fans, you know, believe in yourself. It's okay to be different. Meg? Hello? (laughs) Hello? Hello? I'm back. Okay, let's uh, pick up where we left off there. Okay, so one of the uh, coolest things I think there is about 21 Pilots is that if you aren't like an avid listener and you go to a show, I mean, there are some shows that I go to where I don't really know the artist and I'm just not, they don't really hook me, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think like one of, Kath, who was on last week's episode, um, she went to their show during the Trench era and she doesn't listen to them, but she texted me and she's like this is so good like the show is so good and I think that they do a really good job at um being theatrical like is theatrical even the word how would you describe it I don't I feel like it's just like their energy and like their whole yeah. show is so well thought out like yeah. you don't even feel like you're at a show you feel like you're almost watching like a movie like it's an experience yeah it really is yeah that's definitely the, the type of concert that I enjoy. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Meg is yelling at Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you mute yourself? He's crinkling a chip bag like a Tony No, sack. you're like the mom, like, muting herself and like, Jim, I am recording a podcast. <laughs> And then I'm sure he's in the background, like, I'm recording a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, something I did want to touch on in this, I know, Meg, did you finish the documentary? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know Meg, other Meg Grippa, you have not watched yet, but there were a few things that I feel like, even if you haven't seen the documentary, something that really stood out to me, um, there was a comment, and this just kind of sunk in my heart, just based on this year and how I've been feeling. Um, he says, anxiety is just a companion I have to live with, not an enemy I'm trying to fight. And it just resonated with me because I think when I'm trying, I want my anxiety to go away when I'm experiencing it rather than just 
being like, okay, I just have to learn to live with it rather than try to make it go away. So I just really thought that was beautiful and something that spoke out to me in the documentary. Yeah. But. Well, and how like, instead of making it go away, like how you can just have coping skills mm-hmm. and that like translates in so many different aspects of someone's life, like how you approach different topics and anxiety, I think is like a huge thread in pretty much everyone's life um, mm-hmm. in some way, shape or form. So it's really exciting to me, not that Sean Mendez has anxiety, that doesn't excite me, but it's exciting to me that celebrities and artists mm-hmm. are starting to be more vocal about, mm-hmm. you know, this is how I'm feeling because mm-hmm. I think it's so easy to get caught up in the glitz and glam and like, you know, oh, I'm going to see them for an hour, play a show and it's, that's, it's so fun. But um, it really like, there's so much going on behind the scenes that we just don't know. Yeah. yeah. And it's there. awesome. Cause again, there's that re- relatability factor, just like with tournament pilots, how they are vulnerable on stage and Sean just coming out and saying this, I think he's been very vocal and he's what, 22 years old. And he uh, just living that kind of lifestyle and just kind of from a young age being thrown into this world where he's experiencing this. And then he's just, he's being open about it with his audience and the world. And it's, something again you can relate to and connect with and I just thought it was a beautiful saying um and something that really resonated with me so yeah there was a part where he had to cancel a show because Mm -hmm. of laryngitis um and Megat showed like all these girls like like 30 minutes before the doors open he had to cancel and these girls are sobbing and it showed him like walking up into the upper bowl of the stadium and like sitting down and FaceTiming his mom and he's like crying because he had to cancel the show and he feels so bad. And I just like that, I think made me happy to see because mm-hmm. I feel like it's easy to think that artists are just like me, you know? Yeah. Everything's and, a highlight reel. And yeah. Vulnerability yeah. Is really what creates connection, so. But it like made me happy to see that like he knew that he affected so many other lives and like those people like we talked about it before how getting a concert ticket there's so much buildup like months of buildup before you Mm -hmm. see the show and like it getting canceled right before you go in like literally you're there um so it was nice to see that he like you know he felt that it's not like just another night I know and I think a lot of artists do feel bad when they have to do something like that and I think that they try to push through and I know if I was at that show I probably would have been really upset because you know you wait so long for the show and you're really disappointed you want to see the artist but it's just a good reminder to see his perspective of he's also a human and if he pushes through that could potentially ruin his career where he's gonna right. lose his voice or whatever and then he will never be able to play a show where you could never see him again and it was like he was so upset but I think that sometimes that disappointment makes artists push through when they should really listen to what they mm-hmm. need so that they can power on and continue in their career. Have you guys ever gone to a show where it was canceled like right before? I was I was at a show. I went to see Dua Lipa. I think it was, it was a year and a half ago in Denver. And she literally played three songs and then got off the stage. And everyone was like, where did she go? I'm so confused. Like nobody's on the stage. What's going on? And she tried to push through, but she had a ear infection and somebody ended up coming out and saying she had to cancel the show. And I, I was disappointed and very upset because I was like, why, like, I, I was just mad because I was, didn't even really want to go to the show. I went by myself. I got there. I got a flat tire and I was like, and then I go to the show and then it gets canceled. And I was like, I could have just stayed at home tonight, but I appreciate that she tried to push through, but I was like, it was just a very, I'd never experienced that. Usually the people cancel before the show, but she just couldn't push through and she did make it up. I didn't, I didn't end up going to the second one, but it was a very weird experience. Yeah. Um, there was one time fly show in Michigan that Jess and I were actually on our way to. We were driving. We had like just left my house mm-hmm. and they canceled because the lead singer Cal was sick. And I was, I remember just being very disappointed, mm-hmm. but then we went and got Mexican and margaritas and like life was fine. <laughs> but, 
but like it just yeah I just remember being very disappointed but you like again have to remind yourself like they are human Mm -hmm. yeah it's a it was a good reminder because I know I've had my moments of feeling that and I know it is disappointing but again the artist is a person too and they have to do what's best for them even if it disappoints some people yeah yeah all right, so let's uh, lighten the mood a little bit. Yes. <laughs> Not be so I know. depressing. Um, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh okay. I was just going to say I've really enjoyed the convo. <laughs> yeah, no, I did too. Um, so Meg, in general, what does music mean to you? I feel like it means so much, especially lately. Like even when Jim and I, Jim and I constantly have <laughs> – He's mocking me right now. Uh, <laughs> Jim and I have- Shut up, Jim! <laughs> we have music on like 24 seven. And like, if one of us hears a new song we really like, like we can't wait to li- like let each other listen to it. Mm-hmm. But like, it also like for my moods, like today I was driving home and I was listening to like a mix of like 21 Pilots and Matt Mason and like Rainbow Kitten Surprise. And it was all like very like, angsty angry music because I was like <laughs> had a, sh- a crappy day so I was like <laughs> it like helps me with my moods too and like when I'm sad I put on like sad songs and I get a good cry out and then I feel yeah so well I always used to listen to time flies music if I was feeling sad because it just always put me in a good mood and mm-hmm. I feel like music oh. I am the opposite. If I'm in a sad mood, I'm not trying to change that with happy music. I am like, give me some like sad emo. <laughs> like, let me just feel all the feels. <laughs> I am the same way. Like, I want to sit in it and I want to feel it and I want to cry it out. Let me cry. And then I then I feel better after that. Yeah. It's always a good... Music is like... I know for some people, like, one of my best friends, like, she'll listen to music, but she doesn't, like, really, like, I can tell she doesn't, like, process lyrics. I'm someone Mm -hmm. who, like, I process lyrics, and I'm, like, what was the artist feeling, like, at that time? What were they, like, what caused them to write this song? And I can, like, identify it. I just feel like it's, it's so much more personal than just a song. It's very connecting. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's funny you say that, because for me, I think I connect more to the beat and how um, energetic it might be first before the lyrics like I have to feel like I enjoy the beat before I can connect to the lyrics Mm -hmm. that's interesting yeah Yeah, it had I've never met someone who is more connected to the beat well I when I go through and um through my Spotify and I'm trying to look for new songs for a playlist if I enjoy the beat that's something I'll add to the playlist and then I'll I'll listen to the lyrics later to then get the meaning Mm -hmm. ah that makes sense I can't do that like, what if it just repeats stuff that, like, and it doesn't mean anything? <laughs> and I just, like, I'm not about it. But you know what? I love that for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> well, can we, I know we have some other questions, but can we just highlight um, the Grammy nominations real quick and just... Yeah, do it. So I just wanted to say... I know, okay, so some artists like Halsey and The Weeknd have spoken out and said that they were snubbed from nominations. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't been too up to date on all the music this year, but something that I've seen is that the country album of the year is all the people nominated are women, which I thought is amazing. And then overall, 47% of the nominations are women. So I just wanted to touch on that because I think the music industry still has a long way to go, but that women are being represented in these categories is awesome. You know, the world has a long way to go, <laughs> like in I mean, general. True. <laughs> but I think, like, good things are to come. Like, you know, in the United States, now we're going to have a female vice president, and that's huge. Like, mm-hmm. that's amazing. It's cool um, to look, look up to those people because, I mean, we couldn't even vote back in – Right. I don't know what, 19... We saw that uh, Biden's communications team or something... Is all women? No. Yeah. I think it's... so happy. (laughs) Just having having that representation is huge because you look at little kids and they see 
themselves being represented and there's still a long way to go with representation and diversity but I think it's just awesome that it's a it's a step closer to more women being represented and recognized equality yes (laughs) yeah yeah all right I love that that's very exciting stuff thank you for hitting us with that feel good news Jess (laughs) that's what I'm here for you know (laughs) but Meg we wanted to ask you do you remember what your first concert was or who your first concert was like 97 percent sure it was Avril Lavigne and the Jonas Brothers what a good first show. Stop. <laughs> my brother took me and my niece because my niece was obsessed with the Jonas Brothers. And I like loved Avril. So I loved Avril. Yeah. Skater boy. It was down he at was a skater Dance, boy. And we made like t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say? What did the shirts say? I think my nieces said like something about like I love the Joe Bros or something. And then she had like their names on it. And then I think mine said something like, it was like one of Avril's lyrics, maybe a lyric from Skater Boy or something. <laughs> okay. And yeah. my next question, do you have pictures? I don't I would have to ask my Marissa because Marissa and Ryan okay. took us and Marissa. All right. Okay. Well, you, you need, need to, to try to find Marissa. Those. Yeah. Okay. So we can try to post. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Meg, how has your music taste changed over the years or has it not? I feel like it definitely has. I mean, in high school, I was like, listen to all the like hit songs that were on the radio and like yeah. popular artists. I never really like dug for artists. Like I would just listen to what my friends were listening to or whatever was cool. But as I started like kind of coming into my own in college, I kind of like would put on like a Spotify playlist and like listen to random artists and like find mm-hmm. out what I really liked. And, I ended up, I mean, I was like very poppy, like hip hop kind of vibe, which I still love those, those things. But now I, I vibe definitely more towards like indie and alternative and. That's literally what Kath said last week. Kind of a, yeah. just so vibey. It is. Mm -hmm. Who, who would be your favorite indie alternative artist that you're currently listening to? Of all, okay. Of currently, I would have to say Matt Mason. Okay. I was listening to a random indie playlist and hallucinogenics came on and I was like who is this person like I love this song and then Jim and I have both been listening to like all of his music obsessively for like the past month his music is very it's very good vibes Mm -hmm. his voice is just like it's incredible Honestly, what would we do without Spotify? I don't know if you guys, like, do Apple Music. I only do Spotify. I only do Spotify, but, like, too. It honestly has opened the doors to so many artists that I would never know. Yeah, I agree yeah. 100%. I don't know, like, I know back in the day it was, like, you illegally downloaded music. Like, oh, music. yeah. <laughs> what was that called? Rhapsody Lime or Wire. something? Or no, Lime I Wire? use LimeWire. Same. <laughs> And uh, I would always just, like, search, like, the same five artists that I knew. (laughs) Now I can literally pull up, like, an artist I like, and then I'll be like, you might I also like. And it's like, then I just listen to those, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Now I know I have so much more music at, like, my fingertips. Yeah. Agreed. It Mm -hmm. always, uh, that's where I always find people and just make my playlist is Mm -hmm. just scrolling through random, like, pop rising or even the ones made for you playlists um tailored to what you listen to I love made for you (laughs) I feel like (laughs) Spotify gets me (laughs) it does except Uh, for one time they put Ariana Grande on my like top five artists and I literally never listened to her (laughs) (laughs) no you remember it was like it was like the end of a new year and it was like your top five artists of the year and it was like T.O.P. Cal Scrooby like Cal Shapiro, and then it was all of a sudden it was like number four was Ariana Grande, and I was like, <laughs> I literally think I've listened to her maybe one time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh Spotify got it wrong one time. I was like, I don't even want to post this because it's not me. It's <laughs> not accurate. Hey, she has a great voice. Have you heard her acapella of Dangerous Woman? Nothing, nothing against her. I think she has. Oh. I think her voice is amazing and there are like some of her songs that I really like but it's just not 
she definitely wasn't like top five for me. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, Meg. Favorite concert moment ever. Concert moment ever, like all yeah. time. Yeah, of all time. I mean, there's so many. If we're going time flies, I mean, it could be anything. There's a lot. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's a few. So my first one that comes to mind is when Emily and I did not get front row at a show and we were side stage. We were, we were behind like some random girls and we were like, wow, we're missing out on all this front row love. And we were sad. And Cal, the lead singer of Time Plays, saw us and pointed at us and like winked. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he found me in a crowd of people. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> and that was one of my favorites from that, that era of my life. But then I would say the first time we went to TOP on the floor. and That was such a good night. Trees on the floor at the end with Josh on the crowd, Tyler, on the, Josh and Tyler both in the crowd playing the drums and the confetti comes down. Like I had full body chills. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, like this is happening. We're down here in the middle of like this incredible crowd. Everyone's singing. It was. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely magical. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's so fun. And, um, okay. So right now there's really no live shows to go to. I'm not sure if you've watched anything online, but for the future, whenever we are able to go back to concerts, is there somebody you're looking forward to seeing? I can't wait to see Mr. Wives live again with the new album. It's are you going to watch be. their full show? I did, I did get a ticket for the live stream. <gasps> All right, oh we'll gosh. see you there. I should come to Cincy. We should go together. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we're doing concerts in 2020, guys. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Like, I feel like if the listeners don't listen to Mr. Wives, um, their new album is very lit. Just like, it takes your heart on a journey, like a heart wrenching to like, you know, grieving and then to like finding love again. Um, so like, seeing this album played live is going to be a true journey and I'm very well, excited to go. <laughs> I was supposed to, when did they release the album this year or was it last year? It was last year, right? It was 20. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I was supposed to see them last year live, but then I had uh, mono and I was unable to go. <laughs> so <laughs> oh my gosh, I love them. Um, yeah. Agreed, Meg. They're great. If you uh, could have dinner with any musician, artist, or band, who would it be? I off the off the top, not thinking about it too much. It'd be Andrew McMahon. Yeah, mm. you love you love you some Andrew. And I feel mm. like he's just like my kind of people. Like he like very down to earth, loves beer, loves cocktails. Isn't he from Ohio or no? He grew up in Ohio, yes, and then he moved to the West Coast. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. He's very like chill vibes in his music, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then if your life could have a theme song, what would it be? I thought about this like all day today. Cause I was Ugh. like, I don't know. And then two of them came to mind. So there's two. Slow On by Modest Mouse. And Ride by 21 Pilots. Because I was like, okay, nice. The theme song of my life is like, things go wrong. Sometimes, you know, you're battling things like anxiety, <laughs> things like terrible work life, you know, that kind of stuff. But like, it's always about like bouncing back and then mm -hmm. really finding the things that you enjoy in life and kind of enjoy yeah. those as much as you can. So I think Ride like taking my time on my ride it's like yeah I have you know not everyone loves to work or like to have battle anxiety but like there's so much to be thankful for and it's all about quality time with people you love and seeing good music listening to good music preach that's a good one I love that 
All right, Meg, to close out our question and answer segment, who is your favorite person to attend a concert with? I mean, I'm looking at them. Aww. Aww. My heart. <laughs> I would have to say both of you, but most recently, Meg and I at 21 Pilot shows, like, it is, we are in our own world. No one else yeah. is this. I think, honestly, my favorite show that. with you what he said that's true <laughs> yeah I feel like my favorite show with you Meg was the mile show in Columbus yeah. um because we so Jess there were like there were probably like 25 people at the show yeah yeah <laughs> Jim is talking trash um anyway so there's like no one there but Meg and I are just like in our own world, twirling each other, dancing, like, it's just, when you find friends that you can go to a show to, with, and just, like, dance and sing, like, who cares who's watching, it's just the mm -hmm. best feeling, like, I'm so grateful for you guys. Yeah, I you agree. You too. Like, when we go to shows, we're just, like, I know, Jess, it's the same way when you're there, too, like, all three of us are just kind of, like, dancing, and, you no, know, we don't care what people think, and we're, like, yeah. Like Meg and I were screaming, why, why, why? The word committed. Literally, no one around us even know knew who Mr. Wives was, and I just remember like scre screaming the lyrics, and these people in front of me. I remember them turning around and looking at me, and I was just like, I, I have no regrets. <laughs> like, yeah. That's no the regrets best. At all. Can, yeah, when you can go to a show with somebody. And I, I think it's more fun to go with people who do know the lyrics and can sing it with you and just sing at the top of your lungs, dance like a fool and just yeah. have a good time. Absolutely. Sometimes, sometimes it's a bummer to go with people who are like, who are these people? Like, I don't know this song. Jim, like, Jim hardcore loves 21 Pilots, but at shows, he is like, so reserved. Silent. And it's like, some yeah. people enjoy concerts like that. Me, I have to go crazy and dance it around it frustrates me. People like that. Like, if yeah. you're listening and you're like that, like, I have so much love for you. But my nephew was like that. And at one point, 21 Pilots was his favorite band. And I took him to see 21 Pilots and he sat there, <laughs> like, didn't sing along to anything, didn't show any excitement. And after I was like, I'm never taking you to a concert <laughs> again. <laughs> like, you didn't show any excitement. Never again. It was just not <laughs> acceptable in my world. <laughs> all right well moving on <clears throat> meg we have a segment um about our pet peeves when it comes to concerts do you have any that come to mind yeah for sure pet peeves okay first of all it's people who which we used to do this all the time which makes it even worse people at shows who like literally sprawl out their entire body in front of the stage <laughs> or like you know now like when we went to 21 pilots recently and there was a DJ, <laughs> <laughs> there were these girls that literally like their friends would leave and they were just sprawled out i'm like you guys do not own this stage which back in the old days i would have owned the stage oh yeah that annoys me now um, also, like Meg just said, though, like people not singing or dancing and kind of just like standing there like emotionless. Yeah, like, come on. Right now in front of these artists who are like pouring their heart and soul into the show. Yeah, that bothers me agreed. Well, agreed. well <laughs> one of mine, and I know I've never actually done it, but I don't think I want to. And I think being at a general admission show, I hate when people crowd surf. It just interrupts my concert experience. I just want to, I don't want to have to hold you up in the crowd and That's push you through. Fair. You what? That's so fair. I hate that too. And along with that are mosh pits. I, I don't go to a lot of shows where they mosh pit, but I, it also is annoying because I'm like, why? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Um, I definitely hate when people go to a show and they don't have like basic knowledge of who they're seeing. Um, like I've been to a show where they mispronounce the last name of the person and it's like not accurate at all. Or like time flies when they would assume that it was just Cal. That like really irritated my soul. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because we're a little hardcore. <laughs> yeah, 
but okay, so to be fair, like Cal Scrooby, people call him Cal Scrubby all the time and like genuinely think that's his last name. And I'm like, do you know who you're coming to see? Like that's a little concerning, right? Right. You'd at least basic knowledge, at least know their name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and anything about the band. But yeah. um I, I thought of a good one. I hate ooh. when people start booing the openers. <gasps> oh, good that is a good one. one. Like I went and saw an Andrew McMahon show. Alan Stone opened. <gasps> I oh my gosh, he's gonna be my wreck. <laughs> in, in a couple weeks, yeah. surprise. <laughs> <laughs> He is so good, and like he was rocking it out. His voice was so good, and this people started booing, and they were like, "We want Andrew, we want Andrew," and they're like, "Who are you?" And he was like, "I'm Alan watch, Stone, watch me throw hands." Yes, I, I would that. be so mad. I'm like, well, that's just not- I hate booing in general. Even when you go to a sports game, I'm just like. Even if you don't like the person, it's, I just think it's so rude. And even if, yeah, you might not enjoy them and you want to see the headliner or whatever, why? What's the point of that? That's just. Also, it's like, it takes so much guts and like gumption Mm -hmm. to get up on a stage and pour your heart and soul out and like perform something that you made, you created this and for people to boo it, like that's just so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right, well, we're running out of time again. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> let's, let's move on to our next segment. So All right. this is rapid fire. Please speak up when you answer. This or that. So would you rather go to a general admission or arena show? General admission. Would yeah. you rather? Yes. Outdoor or indoor concert? Indoor. Interesting. Okay. Would you rather go get dressed up for a concert or go casual? Casual. And would you rather attend solo or with people? With people. Gotcha. Would you rather be front row, back row, or anywhere in between? Front row or back row? No in between. I can't. <laughs> gotcha. Love a giant and then between front row or back row, which one would you prefer? Front row, obviously. Okay. And then going to an arena show, would you rather be seated or floor? I think we know the answer. Floor, 100%. Floor. <laughs> okay. And would you rather buy your tickets as soon as they go on sale or buy later when you have the money? As soon as they go on sale. I don't care yeah. how yeah. <laughs> That's the <laughs> attitude. And would you rather, would you wear, would you wear merch to a show or would you not? No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. And what about, would you get to the show when it starts or after the opener? Depends on the the artist, but I prefer to be there with the, I like to see the openers. Agreed. And then are you willing to travel for a show or only attend local concerts? I'll travel my little booty off. (laughs) Heck yeah, Maggie. All right. Dun, dun, dun. It's our favorite time of the week. Um, Artist of the week. Did I say it's our favorite time of the week? It's our favorite time of the pod. (laughs) Same thing. Artists, artists of the week. Again, our fave time to just shout out all the people that deserve all the love um, for all their hard work. So Jess, who's your artist this week? My artist is Public. Again, supporting some local homies. They're from Cincinnati. And if you watched Love Island this summer, their song, Honey, what is it called? Honey in the Summer, I think, is the theme song for that show. And they just, they've opened for Walk the Moon. And I think they just have a really unique sound. And, you know, again, I love to support my local homies, so. Nice. Uh, Meg? I think I already mentioned him, but I'm going to say Matt Mason. He um, is incredible. And go listen to his acoustic stuff because it's freaking good. Acoustic is anything his, is amazing. Yeah. What is his vibe? So his like radio song right now is hallucinogenics. It's more like, it is like indie alternative, but also is like more upbeat. I feel like. Mm-hmm. His yeah. song cringe is, yeah, cringe is my is favorite. Nice. What about um, you, Meg? I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Connor James this week. I, he's one of the ones that I found on a random Spotify, like, Hey, I think you might like this. Uh, playlist and I do he's very vibey 
He's someone who you can tell beats to his own drum. Um, and I love that. So one of the songs I love by him is By Myself. Um, so if you're, you know, feeling a little vibey little moment, go listen to Connor James. Well, I've never heard of him. So I will definitely take yeah, your, you. your pick of the week and listen. Cause we, I, I mean, we always generally have the same music taste. So yeah, I can't wait to listen to both of those. Cause I watched Love Island, but I can't even hear the theme song in my head anymore. Um, it's like, fun fact. Oh, honey in the summer. Ooh. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure Mr. Wives did a song with them. Yeah, I think they did. Probably. Yeah. They always, it always pops up on like my Mr. Wives radio. I think, I think Public opened for 21 Pilots in their local, either Columbus or Cincinnati show. Maybe I'm making that up, but. Nice. Well, Meg, I am so thankful that you were on this episode. It would not be right to start a podcast without having one of the OG members of Meg's and Eggs with a side of Jess on. <laughs> I was honored to be asked to be on the pod. Well, so we much. love you and thank you guys. so much. And we're totally going to have you on again. Yeah, you should. Jim, Jim would love to be a guest. Actually, oh, yeah. I would love to have Jim on as a guest, like genuinely, because he's someone who can talk about how freaking baddie we were, <laughs> like <laughs> how he uh, survived it all. Yeah, how he helped fund my concert addiction. <laughs> if yeah. anyone's wondering, Jim is Meg's husband. Yeah. Soon to be just <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no negative energy up, up in here. All right. Meggie, we love you. I love you guys. All right. We'll talk to you next week, everybody. Bye.